has today surrendered. The last of our enemies is laid low. Peace has once again come to the world. Let us thank God for this great deliverance and his mercies. Long live the king. The years of blood and tears had ended in resounding victory. Australia joined her allies in an outburst of rejoicing, the like of which her cities had never seen before. The pent-up emotion of six years poured out as a flood. Freedom was really theirs. This day of victory meant loved ones would now be safe. Families once again reunited to enjoy the things for which their men and women had fought. So let's go mad for one unforgettable day. Everybody's yelling and cheering and, hey, old chap, it's over. Tear up some paper, it's the thing to do. Telephone books, old posters, income tax forms, torn up and tossed around. They're ripping the piece to pieces. Those in their early teens know little else than the atmosphere of war, but they're getting the new idea all right. As one sardine said to another, how'd you like to be people? So Australia's day of rejoicing goes on. At night, lights of every kind illuminate the scenes of revelry. It's none of my business, but that's a heck of a place for a bike. King's Cross, a well-known forward operational area. Daylight finds 500,000 packing the city to see the victory march, to honor those who fought and worked for all that victory means. Australia remembers the Allied navies, without whom all would have been lost. The Jack Tars and the Mercantile Marine who shared the honors of fighting and danger in the Seven Seas. The diggers of another war, men who made the name of Anzac ring throughout the world. With them marched the younger AIF, whose deeds in the Middle and Far East alike live up to the traditions of their fathers. Each event brings memories of gallant deeds and dauntless men, Australians who added another page to their nation's proud history. Australia has many to remember. The RAAF, who overcame unequal odds and won their spurs in the Battle of Britain over Germany and the jungles of New Guinea and Borneo. The women's services who rallied to augment their menfolk. Girls who nursed the sick and manned the guns. Girls whose help released thousands of sailors, soldiers and airmen for active service. In Brisbane, it's the same story. A whole population en fête. Old and young join in the milling medley of happy folk. Shouting themselves hoarse, dancing themselves giddy. South, Melbourne obviously, look at the overcoats, but even bleak weather couldn't dampen the enthusiasm of the tens of thousands who left office and home to swell the milling throng in the city streets. Reserve forgotten, people let themselves go in an unparalleled wave of carnival gaiety. At the nation's capital, as well as in every city, town and hamlet throughout the Commonwealth, thanks is given for divine aid. Accompanied by the Duchess of Gloucester, the Prime Minister leads in a nationwide acknowledgement to God 
for his many mercies. Today is one of thanksgiving as well as of rejoicing. On this day of celebration, Australians also pay homage to the men whose untiring efforts guided victory in the Pacific. Our gallant American allies who came to these shores, and their beloved president who died in harness, guiding world destiny. Britain, who in her greatest hour of trial faced the enemy alone, united and led by a man of such indomitable spirit. The millions in China and their resolute leader, Chiang Kai-shek, who faced eight years of devastating war and reverses. Australians, who helped others in their hour of need, and their leader in the crucial years when the enemy threatened these shores. Men and their leaders, who have done so much toward making the new world a better world for all. <laughs> 